Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is Handball here and in today's video we're going to do five more tips for beginners on Dauntless Reforged. In my last video I covered like six topics or something or seven even I think and I wanted to uh there's more things that I wanted to address that of course if I would went on and on and on in that video it would have been 20 or 30 minutes but that was my beginner's guide for 2021. If you haven't seen that yet go check that out as well. I'll leave a little card up at the top there so you can see it but I wanted to give five more tips because there's a lot to this game, especially with this update. There's a lot of things that I want to talk about. And so I thought that I would start off here and do a few more tips for the game. I'm playing around with microphone settings, by the way. So if my voice sounds different, that is why. Without any further ado, let's jump straight on into this with number one, which is don't ignore the Slayer tree and progression there. There's a lot of progression to be found in the Slayer tree, uh, the Slayer's progression path, if you will. There, there, there's a lot of things in there that are very important to your Dauntless experience. You know, you, you can unlock different uh, hunting grounds to go to with uh, rams and go up the tree and unlock the other hunting ground. That's how you actually unlock hunting grounds with higher level uh, behemoths. There's also ways that you can unlock through that tree. You unlock, you know, the escalations and trials, which are more challenging. And so you're going to want to go up the tree but for that reason, but also because it makes you stronger as, you know, makes your Slayer stronger as you go through the game. And you'll find that you know there's really really good nodes to go into for instance there's a node that gives you more health potions makes them more powerful there's all the things that make your weapons more powerful of course then there's just buffs to your character in general where like a uh, fire resistance frost resistance etc which are useful of course and then you also have uh you know your various things that you can craft there's grenade spectry which i really you know don't don't do that one that you'll right away you know the other ones are more important i feel like but it's not just about your weapon progression and getting to where you can uh, reroll your weapons. It's not just about all that. You know, you also have all your Slayer progression that you really don't need to ignore. It kind of helps whenever you can increase your health. There's also things to increase your health, increase your stamina. All that sort of thing is contained within the tree. So take a good long look at the progression tree. We're going to do a video about it. Uh, that'll probably be the next video on the channel that we uh, do is the progression tree and how it works and the best way to go, the best paths to take, etc. But do not ignore the progression tree. It is very important to your experience as far as getting up or into the game. Now, this one will be a quick one here. Don't waste your Aether Hearts on just anything. Don't just run out and power surge a bunch of gear that you're not going to enjoy, that, that you don't know for sure if you're going to enjoy. Just because you look up a build online and it looks really good doesn't mean that you're going to enjoy it. So save your Aether Hearts for builds that you know you enjoy, things that you know that you enjoy how to do. Because even though, let's say, something is not the most viable thing in the game, like repeaters or whatever the case may be, you know, some people feel repeaters are kind of weak right now. I'm not going to give my opinion here. But whatever the case may be, even if something isn't, like, viable or meta, if you will, that doesn't mean that you can't play and enjoy it. So don't just run out and spend your Aether Hearts on the meta weapon of today and the meta gear of today. Make sure you enjoy it before you do so because the meta might change tomorrow. So make sure that you're enjoying what you spend them on. Don't just run out and waste them on the first thing that you want to power surge and, you know, and then be mad because you just, you know, you crafted something legendary, you know, two hours later and now you can't power surge it because you don't have any Aether Hearts and you got to grind for them. So make sure that you use them wisely. Don't just run out and waste them. Now, for number three, we're going to talk about a simple little thing that I don't see anybody do, but it's well worth it. If you're fighting a behemoth with a lot of mobility, you know, something that really, really moves across the battlefield over and over and over again, and then you find that when you sprint to the behemoth, you're out of stamina, there's a trick to make it where you never run out of stamina. All you have to do is sheath your weapon. If you sheath your weapon while you're running towards the behemoth, you will not take a stamina penalty. The only time that sprinting gives you a stamina penalty is if you have your weapon out and active where you can attack. So all you gotta do is sheath your weapon and then just unsheath it when you get the behemoth and fight and you'll have full stamina. That's how I do it most of the time if I think about it and that's the best way to do it. That way you always can dodge, you know, you're always ready to dodge, always ready with heavy attacks, combos, everything. You're always ready if you do it that way and sheathing your weapon is just a one simple click of a button. It's really not nothing difficult to do. Anybody can just push the button and sheath their weapon so whatever platform that you're on, be sure that you do that and uh, while you're running long distances across the battlefield towards a behemoth and you can dodge more attacks and be better off for it. That's just a little tip. I haven't really ever seen anybody talk about this, but it is something that you can do. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, which would be number four, I believe we're at now, 
is mix it up with escalations and trials different things once in a while don't always just run the hunting grounds yes that is the best way to progress through the game that's the best place to progress leveling up experience etc but do some escalations once in a while do some trials do some things that are just fun you know, do things just to have fun you don't always have to just be about the grind you know sometimes the grind can get a little tedious and the escalations are more similar to how the game used to play before this update so if you're interested in how it used to be escalations are kind of more similar to that so do try out some of the other aspects of the game escalations are there to be fun they are meant to have you know they're meant for you to have fun so make sure that you're trying those out and doing things with that and just to make sure that you're really getting the most out of your Dauntless experience. You, know, you don't always have to be in the hunting grounds trying to progress as fast as you can or as much as you can. You, know, you make sure that you are doing the game at a pace that's enjoyable. You know, you don't want to get burnt out on grinding. So if you're getting bored of grinding or you're tired of doing bounties for a day or whatever, just go run an escalation. Have some fun. It is a little bit more challenging sometimes. Escalations are meant to be difficult, but they are very fun. Now... Another thing, and this will be the final thing, is find some friends to play with or join a guild. I know the guild system isn't really fleshed out in the game. It's kind of just like a group of players at the minute. But join a guild, find a group of friends, find some people to play with because the game is so much better playing with other people. If you're playing by yourself all the time, then you have to deal with the random teammates that you get. And sometimes that's a great thing. Sometimes it's not a great thing. There are times where I have to leave behemoth fights because people are just dying so much. There's times where the behemoth just leaves on his own because people are dying so much. And it's really frustrating to have to deal with that. And the only way to ensure that you don't have to deal with that is playing with people that you can rely on, people you trust, and friends You know that you are able to rely on. So find a guild, join a guild, find some friends, find a way to play with other people in this game. That is really a good thing to do and really a way that you can make your time in Dauntless more enjoyable because you, you can be more laid back. You don't have to be so worried about, well, I have to do this much damage because these guys can't do it. You know, you can be more laid back. You can choose whatever weapons you kind of want. And you don't really have to play much of the meta. You know, like I use axe most of the time because it does good damage and has good other, you know, everything about the axe and the hunting ground is just good. And so I use it most of the time because I never know who I'm going to get with my random teammates. So if I had some friends, I could use whichever weapon I like. I really like using the strikers and they're good too, but I just think the axe is a little bit more into the meta personally. And so I use the axe. But overall... You know, if I had a friend group, I could use whichever weapon I choose. And you still can with randoms. It's just going to be harder. You know, anytime, like I like the quarterstaff, but I never use that in randoms hardly. Anytime you're playing with friends, you'll be able to use things that you couldn't with the randoms. And so that's why I'm suggesting this. Now, of course, as you know, for the final tip, I'm always, 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 always going to tell you to pet the doggo before you go on a hunt. Because he does get lonely sometimes. People don't pet him like they used to. And so always, always, always pet the dog before you go on a hunt. That is it for this video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I got more Dauntless content planned. It's right around the corner. It's coming. It's on its way. And also, if you guys are interested, I will start a guild where you guys can kind of communicate and meet together um, in the game. Let me know if you're interested in the guild. Drop it in the comments down below. Otherwise, have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.